I'm senior fellow and director of the Europe program here at CSIS. Uh, and on behalf of John Hamry, who uh, was here just a moment ago and had to be called away at the very last second and uh, could not uh, be here to introduce Commissioner Barnier, and he sends his, uh, his regrets to you and certainly to, to the commissioner. But uh, we are extremely grateful that you are here with us today. What a privilege and a, and a pleasure to have the European Union Commissioner for Internal Markets and Services, and I bet you uh, probably didn't think uh, an Internal Markets Commissioner would talk about European common security and defense policy, but we are in for a great treat to hear uh, this uh, very important message. Uh, Michel Barnier, in addition to his responsibilities as uh, Commissioner for the Internal Markets, is also Vice President of the Pan-European Center-Right European People's Party and has served with distinction for many years in the French government, serving as France's Minister of Agricultural and Fisheries, of course, Minister of Foreign Affairs from 2004 to 2005, Minister of European Affairs, Minister of the Environment, and the list goes on and on. I, I will give a plug for the Commissioner's uh, brand new book that has just come out uh, in French, giving his reflections on the future of Europe. Uh, Michel Barnier, se reposer ou être libre, and uh, we certainly uh, will look forward for his reflections on uh, to uh, for Europe to remain uh, to remain free. So, with that, please join me in welcoming Commissioner Michel Barnier to offer reflections on European defense. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Ezer, and good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the support you just tried to give to my book. Huh? I'm sorry, but it is just published in French a few weeks ago, not, not yet in, in English. Huh? Perhaps I can find a publisher. Thanks to you. Huh? The title of this uh, small books uh, which was and which is still is my contribution to the public debate in Europe about Europe and uh, the future of Europe uh, um, is uh, se reposer ou être libre, to rest or to be free. Uh, it's a sentence of uh, Thucydides in the war of Peloponnese, speaking to the Athenians, to rest or to be free, you have to choose. Uh, and I think it's exactly the, the question for the European right now. Uh, and you have just forgot one very important piece of my long political life, uh, which I'm very proud about, and very unusual for a politician, because I spent 10 years of my life, from 81 to 92, to, to organize the Winter Olympics huh? <laughs> in my region of the Alps. And uh, it's very unusual for a politician to spend 10 years for 16 days, huh? <laughs> um, which is a duration of the, the, the Olympics. Um, but thank you very much for inviting me to speak uh, at this uh, uh, session of the CIES, and uh, I wish all the best to John Amory. Thanks also to your team, the team of uh, CSIS, for its uh, outstanding work. And I am very happy, ladies and gentlemen, to, to be here today in front of an American audience, because um, it is of of the utmost importance to continue the dialogue, to improve the dialogue uh, with our American friends. Uh, I was in Brussels, as usual, uh, but last March, when President Obama spoke uh, to young Europeans in very strong speech. Uh, and I can tell you, sometimes it's good to be reminded our shared value as we were on the beaches of Normandy uh, a few days ago, once again. Uh, the reason why I'm here with you today is precisely because I would like to share with you how we want to defend those values together, together with you. And I want to speak to you, uh, of course, as a European Commissioner in charge of the single market, but also the financial regulations. We work so much with uh, uh, all the countries of Europe, but also to build uh, uh, the level playing field and to implement the G20 recommendations 
on both sides of the Atlantic uh, during the last five years. But not only as a European commissioner, but also as a former French foreign minister, uh, we worked closely with the US uh, in 2004, in particular with President Bush, uh, when uh, we managed together to free Lebanon uh, from the grip of Syria. And I don't forget today this close cooperation between us. Uh, the world has changed since the end of the Cold War, and our relationship should be deepened. On both sides of the Atlantic, we have faced the worst financial and economic crisis since the Great Depression. America took important steps. It implemented a strong recovery plan and bold monetary policy. And it is well on its way towards energy independence and objective that would have seemed totally unrealistic only a few years ago. And on our side, in Europe also, we have taken great strides to save the euro, to regulate financial markets, establish a banking union, that is my major achievement of the last two years, and to consolidate public finances, improve our competitiveness, and put in place new systems of economic and fiscal governance. I'm confident that both the US and Europe will emerge stronger from this crisis. Never forget when you look at what is decided and uh, built in Europe, uh, that it is always uh, more difficult on our side. Uh, Europe uh, is not, uh, does not want to be a federal state. We have to work and to respect 28 uh, member states. We are not a federal state, and so it's uh, always uh, more difficult to, to work and, and to decide. But uh, that won't be enough, all what we did. Since the end of the Cold War, the world in which we live has become smaller, faster, more complex, and more interconnected. New actors, new interdependencies, and new threats are emerge. Inequalities, depletion of resources, climate change and demography, remain sources of instability in too many parts of the world. Nations outside of the US and Europe have entered the global scene as big industrial, economic, sometimes military powers, China, India, and Brazil, to name a few. Defending their own interests in their sphere of influence, taking stronger positions in the UN Security Council. All this leads to turbulence and unrest in more and more places around the world. In the Sahel, so painfully brought home to us by the kidnapping of those schoolgirls in Nigeria, in Afghanistan and Pakistan, throughout the Middle East, where the Syrian crisis show little sign of easing, and next to it, uh, the increasing pressure of fundamentalists in various um, Iraqi regions today. Closer to home, Ukraine, where the national army and separatists are now openly fighting each other in the Slavic regions. And we should not forget the simmering tensions in the South China Sea. Everywhere, we see that regional crises can turn into violent conflicts, and that violence can come from both state and non-state actors. Terrorists can strike anyone, anywhere. A car bomb in Kabul, or a Kalashnikov at the Brussels Jewish Museum a few days ago, weapons of mass destruction are still within reach for a number of countries. And finally, uh, if I may so, cyber attacks can target 
all of us, governments, banks, telecom companies, or hospitals. In this new international order or disorder, the economic, military, political, and even moral leadership of the West is increasingly challenged. If the US and the EU want to be in a position to influence this new world, we need to be actors, not spectators. We need to act together. In the midst of such turbulence, it's vital to know who your friends are. Be able to count on a reliable partner. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to stress that point to you. Today, Europe is that reliable partner for the US. And we are determined to act together with you to defend our common values and interests. To do so, and this is my second point, as natural allies and close friends, we need to be able to redesign our relationship and develop it further. I hardly need to recall the long and special partnership we have built together. The US intervened twice in the last century to help defend democracy in Europe against dictatorship and tyranny. It helped uh, to rebuild Europe with the Marshall Plan. Together, we withstood the spread of communism in the Cold War rage, saw the collapse of the Iron Curtain, and reunified the European family. And more recently, we have been partners in fighting terrorism, particularly in Afghanistan. Today, the negotiations toward the free and fair, I take the two words of the President Obama, free and fair, free and free uh, trade, uh, global partnership that were started last year offer a unique opportunity to strengthen and redesign the transatlantic partnership, to grow both our economies without sacrificing the values that the, we all dear, be at the forefront of global rules and standards, and shape the global business environment for years to come. We need, in this dialogue, to be ambitious and build a real transatlantic marketplace. Trade between us does not stumble over import tariffs, already quite low at uh, 4%. Uh, it is to the behind the border issues where the real potential for improvement lies. And that is where we have to focus our energies. President Obama, as I said, um, said this treaty must be free and fair. And I agree. And we are not there yet. However, ladies and gentlemen, important for the TTIP may be, the relationship between the US and Europe cannot and must not be reduced to that of only a free trade area. It has to be a stronger political relationship. If we Europeans want to remain your best allies on the world stage, we have to act also as a security provider. We cannot leave the US alone being the world's only policeman. As President Obama said in West Point two weeks ago, the US can only use its military might when its own core interests are under threat. Allies and partners have to be mobilized to take collective action. And the President also said rightly that the US military is still be the biggest armor in the world, but not every problem is a nail. Taken together, these two assumptions should be the foundation of a renewed transatlantic security partnership. In today's world, security can hardly ever been achieved only by military means. What we need is a comprehensive approach based on the broad spectrum of mostly civil instruments. This is a traditional EU security approach and the main feature of its common foreign and security policy. However, in many cases, it is indispensable 
to back up those civil instruments with the capacity to use military firepower. Otherwise, diplomacy remains toothless. A credible common and foreign security and defense policy, therefore, needs first a strong common security and defense policy. And Europe can only become a credible security provider if it has also the military means to act and to be able to act without always depending on support from the US. Unfortunately, this is not the reality today. For many years, European nations have constantly reduced their defense expenditures and, take, uh, and to make things even worse, they did so in an uncoordinated way. This has led to an important capability shortfalls that limit Europe's capacity to act. To overcome, to overcome these shortfalls and build a capacity to act, Europe has only one option, cooperation and integration. Uh, Arnaud Dangean, who is the chair of the Security and Defence Committee in the European uh, Parliament, uh, and uh, who are several times uh, uh, seen you, uh, been, been your, your guest here in this ICS, uh, put it well recently, and I quote him, none of our member states, not even France or UK, the two strongest military powers in Europe, is in the position alone to face today's security challenges and threats in Europe. None of our member states, not even Germany, the strongest economic power, is in a position alone to ensure the competitiveness of its national industrial base. And finally, none of our member states, not even the most atomicist ones, is in a position to rest over forever on only the protection of the US. To put, to put it in a nutshell, the US needs a strong Europe and only a united Europe has the potential to be strong and to be free. That's just uh, what I try to, to put in this small book. Uh, and I stress, uh, ladies and gentlemen, united, not uniform. United, not uniform. I may add a common foreign and defense policy, not a single foreign and defense policy. In the EU today, there is a growing awareness of the necessity to rise to this challenge. Last December, for the first time since the entry into force of the Lisbon Treaty, perhaps 10 years, European leaders came together to discuss defense at the highest political level. And they are clearly committed to stepping up the common security and defense policy. How? First, increasing the effectiveness of the CSDP, this common security and defense policy, in particular by strengthening the comprehensive security approach which combines civil and military means. Second, enhancing the development of defense capabilities with a focus on the most critical capability shortfalls. And third, strengthening Europe's defense industry, in particular by deepening the EU internal market for defense and boosting innovations. To achieve these objectives, they tasked member states and European institutions to take more than 30 concrete steps. The catalog covers a broad spectrum of measures, ranging from preparing a maritime security strategy to developing an air-to-air -air refueling capacity or developing a comprehensive security of supply regime. The message was clear. Member States and all EU institutions, the External Action Service under the direction of Cathy Ashton, the European Defence Agency, the European Commission have to deliver and report progress to head of states and governments by June 2015. We know, I know, 
that cooperation in defense is never easy, since it touches upon national sovereignty, and that European countries have strong, strong national traditions, 28, in fact, uh, different national traditions, with, which remain strong obstacles to any common approach. But uh, speaking about the Commission, which is one of these institutions, I'm sure that we had uh, in that goal and to achieve this, uh, this goal, uh, uh, real added value. And with my colleagues of the Commission, we have worked on very specific fields where, through our policy, through our expertise, we can bring to the other states this added value to build this uh, common security uh, policy. For instance, uh, the policy for energy, uh, standardizations, research programs, public procurements, uh, trade or space, that are the fields where we can bring this uh, added value. We will not reach these objectives overnight. However, they are necessary, and I am convinced that the next Commission, starting its work uh, from next October, will keep security and defense high on its political agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we have more to do. Uh, as a politician and based on recent developments, I see uh, telegraphically three main developments. First, the situation in uh, Crema made it clear that we lack a rapid and efficient sanction regime because we don't have a shared understanding or overview of the investments and assets held by Russian companies and citizens in the EU, we took too long to react. I have long called for a monitoring system for foreign investments to be implemented, especially those in critical technologies or defense industry. Second, the threat, the threat of Europe's gas supply gives us a unique opportunity to start a reflection on energy in Europe, just as you did here a number of years ago with Shell Gas. This is as much a matter of independence as it is of competitiveness. And third, I think it is of the utmost importance to open a broad debate about Europe's strategic priorities. Based on the existing security strategy, we need to develop a new strategic concept, one that defines our common interests, the challenge and sometimes the threats we face, and the capability we need to tackle these challenges. We need such a concept in particular to orchestrate our policies better in our neighborhood, Eastern Europe and the Balkans, Maghreb and Africa. For how can we pretend to act on the world stage if we are not able to play an active part with our nearest neighbors? By setting out this strategic concept, we should also be able to better define how we, wish we would share the burden of security and defense, not only between us Europeans, but also uh, of our common interest with the US. Once we have a strategic concept, we should be able to make better progress with EU countries on planning and training, on cooperating to develop new technologies and capabilities, on exchanging information and intelligence, and why not? on developing a range of common capabilities operated directly sometimes by the EU. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, uh, in the world order, the world order of the 21st century, the US and Europe need each other more than ever before. The US needs a strong Europe, and Europe can only be strong if it is united. And if the EU, EU develops a powerful common defense policy based on far-reaching cooperation and integration. When Europe steps up, 
its military and technological capabilities, it will be better placed to intervene where and when the US does not wish to do so, such as in Africa. And a much more capable partner in joint actions like in Libya. Europe and the US are a good team for a long time. We have shown it in the past and we will prove it in the future, employing every tool in the armory to build our partnership and rising to the challenges of an ever-changing world. Thank you very much for your attention. Commissioner Barnier, thank you so much. Uh, I always appreciate uh, when a speaker comes here and pulls back and gives us that big picture, uh, and always by beginning to, to, to begin the presentation by saying, defending our values. Sometimes we have to reinforce that message of, of what we are, are doing here. We have about 30 minutes for some good dialogue and, and questions. I'm going to start uh, asking you, Commissioner, a couple of questions, allow our audience to, to think through their questions. When I turn this over to you, we have microphones. Um, if you could raise your hand and uh, give us your name and affiliation and speak very clearly into that microphone. Sometimes it's a little hard for us to hear the question up here. And then the commissioner will respond. Uh, commissioner has a, a translator here in case uh, there's any questions. So uh, that's why we have a colleague that's uh, joined us up here. So sometimes, sometimes it's easier for me and to be more concrete and more precise to, to speak in my um, mother tongue and uh, to be helped by my well, that's interpreter. But we we'll try to speak in English. No, well, you, you're fabulous. It would be easier for me and perhaps for you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> fantastic. And we'll give all, all of us uh, uh, get our French back in good working order as well. Thank you. So let me begin. You laid out a very daunting list of security challenges in the beginning. But what would you consider, Commissioner, the, the greatest threat to Europe's security today? I think one of the fundamental challenges for both the European Union as well as for NATO is that there's a lack of agreement on that common threat. And then, of course, from lack of that common threat assessment, it's very difficult to increase defense spending if either you don't think there is a threat or you're not sure exactly where that threat comes from. So I would welcome your thoughts. Uh, some have suggested it's Russia. Others have suggested Syrian fighters that are returning back to Europe. Some would suggest uh, the immigrants that are, are, are coming to Europe's shores from unrest in North Africa. What's the common threat? And do you think Europe is preparing for that threat? Uh, it depends where, where we are in Europe and from where we are coming from. Huh? Absolutely. Because we start from very different parts of, of the history. And if you look at the, these 28 countries, where they are in the Nordic, the trois pays baltes étaient des provinces soviétiques. Three Baltic states used to be uh, Russian pro or Soviet provinces. Il n'y a pas si longtemps. Not so long ago. Euh, la Pologne, qui est un très grand pays, est directement confrontée à la stabilité de l'est de l'Europe. Uh, Poland, which is a very large country, is directly confronted with the risk to Europe's stability. Les pays qui sont le plus au sud-est sont directement confrontés aux conséquences euh, de l'instabilité euh, du Proche-Orient. The countries to the uh, southeast are most directly confronted with instability in the Near East. Naturellement. Euh, La France, l'Espagne, l'Italie sont juste face à l'Afrique et ont une tradition diplomatique, historique, culturelle dans cet immense continent. Naturally, France, Italy and Spain are directly opposite Africa and have a long-standing diplomatic and political uh, and cultural history of ties with the continent of Africa. Ce qui explique que la France, par exemple, fait face à ce que je crois être son devoir en étant au Mali ou en Centrafrique, mais un peu seul. And that is why France, I would say, is living up to its duties, I would put it, in intervening in Mali, but it's a bit on its own out there. 
Donc, vous voyez bien qu'on est très loin d'une politique étrangère réellement commune. So you see, we're a long way off a truly common foreign policy. Et encore moins d'une politique de défense commune. And still further from a common defense policy. Parce qu'on n'a pas le même degré de, de sensibilité, de priorité. Because we don't have the same degree of uh, sensibilities and priorities. Et le jour où, du côté de, de l'Europe centrale, on, on se préoccupera autant du, du Mali ou du Centrafrique qu'au sud de l'Europe. And the day when uh, the countries in Central Europe show as much concern as other parts of Europe for what goes on in, say, Mali. Où les, où les Français ou les, les gens du sud de l'Europe se préoccuperont euh, avec la même sensibilité que les Polonais de ce qui se passe en Ukraine. Or the day when uh, people in France are going to be uh, just as concerned with what is going on in Ukraine as our people say in Poland. On aura une politique étrangère. When that day comes, we will have a, a foreign policy. De ce nom. Uh, Mais which is worthy of the name. À partir de, de diagnostic euh, réaliste. But starting from uh, realistic diagnoses, nous, nous we are making progress. On ne pas avec un coup de magique, hein. Now, we won't uh, progress uh, with the wave of a magic wand. And unfortunately, in moments of crisis, Uh, when you have your back against the wall, when you're facing upheavals, if you haven't done the work beforehand, it's very difficult to react together. And the coup de chapeau, le, le témoignage que je veux apporter, parce que je suis l'un de ses collègues, et donc très proche d'elle, de à Catherine Ashton, c'est le travail qu'elle fait depuis cinq ans pour construire ce lieu de culture diplomatique commune dont ont besoin les Européens. And I want to doff my hat uh, to my uh, colleague and friend uh, whom I've been working with uh, uh, for over the last few years, uh, to Cathy Ashton, who over five years has worked hard to build up this space, this common space for uh, joint diplomacy. Mettre les diplomates, les stratèges, les services, euh, les les, 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 les gens qui font de la géopolitique ensemble. To bring together uh, diplomats, uh, uh, people working on foreign policy, strategists. Donc voilà, je, je n'ai pas une réponse définitive ni claire à votre question. So I don't have a, a single clear-cut and once and for all answer to your question. C'est exactement pour ça, à la fin de mon speech, que j'ai évoqué l'idée de, de ce concept stratégique, peut-être de ce livre blanc auquel nous devons travailler, Maintenant que le service diplomatique a, a commencé ses, son, son, son effort de, de, de mise en commun sur de bonnes bases. And this is why, at the end of my speech, I spoke of, about a, a need for a strategic concept, a white paper. Now uh, that uh, the basic work has been done to bring together uh, the diplomats and forge this uh, common space for diplomatic thinking. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. The fact that the European um, uh, strategy really last issued in 2003, slightly updated in 2008. I think we all would look forward to the next commission and the next external action surface putting forward uh, certainly a, a new concept. Le dernier travail de concept stratégique a été fait par Javier Solana. The latest uh, strategic concept paper was drawn up by Javier Solana. Yeah. C'était un, une étape très importante. That represented a very important stage. La, la, la capacité militaire de défense est toute, toute nouvelle, c'est une dizaine d'années. Uh, defense military capability is very recent, it's only 10 years old at most. Néanmoins, nous avons fait une bonne vingtaine d'interventions civiles, low, militaires ou militaires en tant qu'Européens dans plusieurs régions du monde. Uh, nevertheless, we have undertaken uh, about 20 civil or military or civil come military interventions in various parts of the world, we Europeans. Donc c'est un ongoing process. So it is an ongoing process. Do you sense, I mean, one sign of progress, at least for many Americans, one sign of progress, we'd like to see an increase in European defense spending, but yet we don't see, with the exception of some expressions by the Baltic states, Poland, Romania, um, do you see any likelihood politically uh, that uh, European countries would, would increase their defense spending, hopefully in cooperation and integration uh, with other European countries? Tout se tient. Hein. Well, it all hangs together. Everything's interrelated. Si, si vous voulez que les pays européens 
dépense plus et d'abord dépense mieux. If you want European countries to spend more and above all spend better, il faut que les citoyens, qui sont aussi des contribuables, hein, then the citizens who are after all taxpayers as well, comprennent pourquoi. Uh, they have to understand why this has to be done. Et donc voilà pourquoi il faut faire ce travail de conceptualisation préalable. And this is why this uh, advanced conceptual thinking has to be carried out. Et, et, et je ne crois pas qu'on globalement on dépensera beaucoup plus que ce qu'on dépense aujourd'hui. Hein. I don't think that overall uh, we will be spending much more than we're spending today. Si vous mettez les 28 budgets de défense agrégés théoriquement, hein, if you aggregate the 28 defense budgets in theory, plus euh, le, le budget commun qui est d'ores et déjà attribué, hein, and com and add to that the common budget which is already allocated, vous tombez sur une somme qui est pas loin de ce que dépense la Chine actuellement en, en termes militaires. Hein, you end up with a sum which is slightly above what China is actually spending Donc now in defense. Négligeable. And that's uh, that's not small beer. Le problème c'est que ce sont des dépenses, notamment euh, en matière de recherche où nous sommes très faibles, 10 euh, de, par rapport aux Américains. Hein. But the problem is that uh, this is expenditure uh, which uh, involves, say, very little on research, say 10% of what the Americans are spending on research. Et que, en plus, ces dépenses qui ne sont pas forcément mises là où on devrait les mettre, comme la, comme la recherche, sont, sont juxtaposées. Hein. And, and furthermore, this expenditure, which is not necessarily devoted to what it should be, say, research, uh, is uh, juxtaposed, it's separate. Et, et pour compléter mon tableau, 80% de ce budget global est dépensé par trois pays. And to complete my picture, 80% of this overall budget is spent by three countries. Donc, euh, euh, le, le vrai travail à faire, c'est celui de la coordination. So the real work to be done is work on coordination. Et, et de mettre ensemble des programmes, de fixer un objectif commun. Uh, putting together programs, setting a, a common objective. Moi, j'ai beaucoup travaillé comme commissaire euh, en respectant les compétences de la commission. Je ne s'occupe pas de politique étrangère et de défense directement euh, sur euh, les, les quelques sujets que j'évoquais dans mon speech euh, où nous avons une valeur ajoutée uh, as, pour faciliter cette coordination. As commissioner, I've done a lot of work on the various points I mentioned in my speech to facilitate co coordination, while respecting, of course, the limits to uh, our competence as commission in the area of defense. Par exemple, nous avons obtenu dans notre proposition, le chef d'État l'ont approuvé, que le budget de la recherche puisse être utilisé de manière duale. Uh, for example, we managed to get the heads of state and government in the European Council to agree to our proposal uh, that uh, expenditure on, uh, on, on defense should be done on a dual basis. Research. On research, I'm sorry, should be done on a dual basis. Uh, research, pour la première fois. For the first time. Et on peut imaginer un programme de drones uh, qui soit financé par le budget européen and avec un usage mixte, notamment civil, parce qu'on a besoin de drones pour la surveillance de nos frontières. Uh, for example, you could imagine a drone program uh, financed out of our research expenditures, which could be put both to civilian and military use, because after all, we need drones to uh, monitor our frontiers. Donc je dis coordonner déjà ce que nous faisons. So I say coordinate what we do already. Donner du sens à ce que nous faisons. Give meaning to what we are doing. Et tout ce qui se passe autour de nous à l'est avec la crise ukrainienne, le Proche-Orient, l'instabilité en Afrique, montre bien que, que les Européens ont à se préoccuper de leur propre sécurité. Everything which is going on around us, say the crisis in Ukraine, uh, uh, the troubles in the Near East, instability in Africa, shows that uh, Europe has to deal with its security. Commissioner, if you will allow me, I'd like to stray a little bit away from the defense and security discussion because it's too important to have you here. I would love to get your reflections on the outcome of the European Parliament elections. What were Europeans telling European politicians about what they wanted for the future of Europe? And obviously wearing uh, your, your national hat, what were the French voters telling you after their vote for the election, uh, during the election? Not, not, not after their vote, but uh, with their vote. With their vote. Uh, nous, nous venons d'avoir un renouvellement complet du Parlement européen. We've just had a complete renewal of the European Parliament. Je, je veux dire à nos amis américains qui sont là que le Parlement européen maintenant a un rôle extrêmement important. I wish to say to our American friends in the audience that the European Parliament now has a very important role. 
Par exemple, moi, je suis chargé de la régulation financière, comme for, vous le savez. Par exemple, comme vous savez, je suis responsable de la régulation financière. J'ai présenté 41 lois depuis 4 ans pour mettre en œuvre l'agenda du G20 en Europe. J'ai table 41 lois over the last 4 years to implement the G20 agenda. Certains banquiers, d'ailleurs, trouvent que ça fait beaucoup. Hein. Besides, some bankers think that that's a bit much. Euh, mais moi, je n'ai pas la mémoire courte. Hein. But I don't have a short memory. Euh, The, the crisis is not so far, huh? and the consequences, uh, the, the social, human, and, and economic level are, are still there. Uh, sur toutes ces lois, j'ai dû obtenir l'accord du Parlement européen. On all of those laws, I had to obtain the agreement of the European Parliament. À égalité avec les ministres des Finances. Uh, that was on an equal footing with the finance ministers. Et si ça met pas d'accord, il n'y a pas, il n'y a pas de loi européenne. And if they don't agree, you don't, you don't have a European law. Bon. Donc, uh, ce Parlement est en place. So the, this European Parliament is now in place. Sa très grande majorité est pour la poursuite et l'amélioration de la construction européenne. Uh, the broad majority within it is in favour of the putting in place and the development of uh, European construction. Le principal groupe aujourd'hui, c'est le groupe du Parti populaire européen. And now the main group is the European People's Party today. Le parti de centre droit, donc de juste dire l'un des vice-présidents. Uh, the centre-right party, of which I'm one of the vice-presidents. C'est pourquoi je pense que ce parti doit être le pivot de la nouvelle grande majorité euh, euh, dans l'Union européenne et que notre candidat, Jean-Claude Juncker, doit être le président de la Commission. This is why I think this uh, uh, party has to be the pivot of the uh, broad majority within the European Parliament and why its lead candidate, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, should be the president of the Commission. Et vous devez bien comprendre qu'il n'y a pas de majorité politique claire dans ce Parlement. But you need to understand that you don't have a clear-cut political majority within gauche. the Parliament. You don't have a right-left uh, split. Nous allons à travailler ensemble. We need to work together. Donc il y aura une grande majorité d'idées et de projets regroupant le Parti Socialiste, le Parti Populaire, les Libéraux, peut-être les Verts, et c'est ça que nous sommes en train de préparer. Uh, you're, you're going to have a broad majority made up of the European People's Party, uh, the European Socialists, uh, maybe the Liberals and also the uh, Greens, and we have to work together. Et c'est possible, et c'est possible. And this is possible. Sur tous les textes de régulation financière, j'ai obtenu le soutien, finalement, de, de tous ces partis politiques. And on the different texts on financial regulation, I managed to obtain the support of all of those political parties. Ah, donc, je... je je pense que l'Europe sera poursuivie et améliorée grâce à cette majorité au Parlement. So I think that the construction of Europe will be pursued and improved by this majority within the European Parliament. Maintenant, la crise financière. And now the financial crisis. La crise économique. The economic crisis. La crise de la dette. The debt crisis. Qui a provoqué des mesures d'austérité dans beaucoup de pays. That uh, led to austerity measures being taken in a number of countries. Avec un chômage qui s'est accru très lourdement dans beaucoup de pays. With unemployment that has gone up very steeply in quite a few countries. Beaucoup de souffrance. A lot of suffering. Uh, uh, a provoqué uh, un doute supplémentaire sur ce que nous faisons ensemble. Et pourquoi nous le faisons. All of this has sparked uh, additional doubts about what we've been doing and why we're doing it et des poussées populistes. And a populist upsurge. Et des partis extrêmes qui exploitent euh, la souffrance des gens. Extremist parties exploiting the suffering of people. Et derrière tous ces partis populistes, il y a du protectionnisme. And behind all of these populist parties, you have uh, protectionism. C'est pour ça que les dirigeants européens dont je fais partie doivent faire très attention. And this is why European leaders, uh, I am among them, have to be very careful. Mon opinion, c'est qu'il y a des leçons à tirer de cette élection. Uh, my opinion is that there are lessons to be drawn from this election. Y compris du vote dans un, un pays euh, euh, qui, qui ne m'a pas surpris, mais qui est extrêmement, euh, qui nous interpelle de, de 24 à 25 de gens qui votent à l'extrême droite. Hein. Uh, including the vote uh, in my country, which I wasn't surprised by, but which really leads us to question the situation. The vote that led uh, to uh, 24 or 25 uh, percent of the population voting for an extreme right party. Extreme right. Hein. Uh, uh, on ne va pas se comporter comme des lapins pris dans le, la lumière de. de de, des phares, hein. Now we're not going to act like rabbits caught in the headlights. Il va falloir réagir. We're going to have to react. Ce que j'essaie de dire dans ce livre préventivement. Hein. And this is what I did in this book preventively. Nous devons changer un certain de choses à Bruxelles we, et dans l'Europe. Hein. We have to change a number of things in Brussels and in Europe. Moins de bureaucratie. Less bureaucracy. Moins de réglementation. Less regulation. Et plus de politique. And more politics, more policy making. Et il faut aussi répondre à la question britannique qui est importante. Hein. And we also have to answer the British question, which is important. Nous avons besoin de rester ensemble. We need to stay together. 
euh, imaginer que le Royaume-Uni se sépare de l'Europe serait un affaiblissement pour tout le monde. Imagine the UK breaking off from Europe. That would mean a weakening of everybody. Et moi, je me refuse à cette, euh, cette hypothèse. And this is a possibility which I, uh, I reject. Mais nous devons euh, convaincre But we need to convince. Et, et, et montrer que ce que disent les, les électeurs britanniques, ce que disent les électeurs français, euh, les Pays-Bas et d'autres, est entendu. Et que European added value euro, and to to uh, to to, uh, to screen each of the the, politi the policies, each of the European competence, and to look uh, at these policies, at these competence, and to, to, to look where are the added value for European action. Uh, where is the value valeur européenne European? Est-ce qu'elle est encore là Est-ce qu'elle doit arriver Est-ce qu'elle n'est plus là Et de tirer des conséquences. Where the added value of Europe is, is it still there Where it has to be uh, created And what consequences, what conclusions have to be drawn from that screening La deuxième conséquence, c'est de mener des politiques qui attendent les gens pour relancer la croissance et la compétitivité. And the second conclusion to be drawn is that uh, we have to launch the policy that people expect in order to revive uh, growth and employment. And in that book, I try to describe what we need to do together to remain free or to become free and to be, become to, to remain strong in the global world uh, industry defense uh, energy um, uh, digital agenda that are the fields where we need more politics and sometimes less less regulations Fantastic. I think that'd be music to many ears uh, in the United States as well. We had time to take a few questions. What I'll do is bundle them. So, Commissioner, you may have to uh, uh, take a few notes. So we'll take a few questions, and we'll start right down here, right in the front. Just wait for a microphone, Rob, right here. Thank you. Michael Langer, I'm from Brussels. Uh, I represent there the NATO Industry Advisory Group. So we are discussing also these issues. Uh, and permit me that way come back from uh, the exclusion of elections to the real issues of uh, uh, the fragmentation. You know, I think you had the summit in December and we evaluated the results there. I think one of the biggest uh, discrepancies is that we are fragmented. We are fragmented, we are fragmented in the, uh, in the uh, industry, we are fragmented in the requirements, Uh, I think funding is there, but we shouldn't split it into 19 version of, a, of an equipment. So what, what is your impression after the December or from the December Council is, are the member states who have really the money, are the member states giving some kind of sovereignty up to come together in one basket to fund things? You mentioned the ERPAS system, so the Uh, UAV systems. If we run around in Brussels, I never found somebody who really has money in hand. You know, you find three or four million, but that's a bigger program. So where is really the money put together to really achieve something together, unfragmented, in an efficient way? Thank you. I'll to take a question right here, Rob, or Eric, that's fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sure, thank you for your comments. I'm Byron Callen at Capital Alpha Partners. In your prepared remarks, you talked about the capability shortfalls, the, the critical capability shortfalls. You mentioned air to air refueling. I wonder if you can add what, what are some of the other critical capability shortfalls that you'd like to address from a military standpoint? Thank you. We have, uh, we'll just pass that on to Gail right there. Thank you. Uh, Gail Maddox, uh, the Naval Academy. Um, you talked about the need for a new strategic concept. Could you um, maybe address what you see as the major uh, issues that need to be uh, redesigned, that need to be, uh, that are missing now and probably need to be in that new strategic concept? Thank you. Thank you. Can I squeeze one more? We'll go right back to the 
My name is uh, Nicholas Blake. I work at the National Democratic Institute here in Washington working on our Balkans programming. Um, so I was curious, you mentioned in your remarks interests that the EU has in terms of North Africa, in Ukraine, also in cybersecurity. I'm wondering from your perspective, what is the Balkan agenda moving forward? Is it limited to the accession Balkan. negotiations? Um, and is there a security role moving forward? In the last six months, we've seen French troops withdraw, but also British troops coming into Bosnia. So I'm wondering, you know, is there a common approach moving forward? Well, that was a wonderful menu. Uh, where is the money to, to help uh, eliminate the fragmentation? Um, what are those critical capabilities? In addition to air-to-air -air refueling, list some others. What are the missing elements in a new European security strategy? And what's the plan for the Western Balkans? So that's a, a wonderful no, menu. Commissioner. Plusieurs de ces questions sont liées. Several of those questions are linked. Je ne peux pas rentrer dans tous les détails comme si j'étais commissaire chargé de la politique étrangère de la défense. Uh, I won't go into all of the details as if I were the commissioner responsible for, responsible for foreign policy and defense. Je suis public que, que je suis en charge d'une partie du travail de la commission. Je ne vais euh, pas exprimer d'opinion totalement personnelle parce que j'engage je, en m'exprimant publiquement euh, l'institution dont je fais partie. Uh, as uh, this is a public meeting and as I have responsibility within an institution for a particular area, I'm not going to uh, speak uh, on a purely personal basis. After all, I would be committing uh, the institution that I work for. Uh, je, je dois rappeler que la Commission européenne n'a pas de compétence uh, sur les sujets de politique étrangère de défense sauf les points que j'ai évoqués dans mon speech. I have to recall that the European Commission does not have competence over uh, the points of foreign defense policy that I um, the, uh, that uh, I mentioned except those that I mentioned in my speech. Qui, qui tiennent généralement au marché intérieur. Hein. That are generally related to the donc, internal market. C'est important pour moi de, de, de respecter ces, ces limites là et de ne pas donner le sentiment euh, il y a du côté de Londres ou d'autres pays des craintes que qu'on veuille euh, uh, tout faire à Bruxelles et ce sujet-là est extrêmement sensible. Uh, and it's important for me that I limit, that I respect those limits. After all, there are fears in uh, London and other capitals that uh, we might overstep the limits of our competence. Donc, dans la communication que nous avons faite au mois de juillet uh, 2013 et qui a été une des éléments de, de préparation du sommet de décembre and dont vous avez parlé, monsieur. In our, July, in our July uh, 2013 communication that prepared the December 2013 European Council that you referred to, sir, we respected those limits. Je suis allé au bout des limites. And I took the matter up to the limits. Je ai pas dépassé, hein? But I didn't go beyond them Avec mes collègues. with my colleagues. Et, et, mais nous sommes allés assez loin. Et ce que nous avons proposé euh, a été pris en compte par les chefs de gouvernement et nous ont demandé de travailler à ce sujet sur des problèmes dual de, de recherche sur euh, l'utilisation de la politique de l'espace euh, dans le domaine de la sécurité, euh, sur, euh, le cas échéant, un programme de recherche lié aux drones. Euh, nous allons voir comment améliorer la standardisation et la normalisation. C'est incroyable dans le marché unique que pour le matériel militaire, il y ait des standards très différents d'un pays à l'autre et donc la capacité à acheter les mêmes... Euh, fusils ou les mêmes, euh, les mêmes équipements parce qu'ils ne sont pas sous les mêmes normes. Um, we, uh, with my colleagues, went as far as we could within those limits. And besides, the European Council uh, uh, took on board our ideas and our proposals and came forward with uh, recommendations that uh, we make uh, proposals on the question of uh, the way in which research could be used for dual purposes, uh, the way in which space could be um, linked to security and research uh, could be uh, brought to bear on drones or standardization could be improved. After all, it's extraordinary that in the internal market, if you want to purchase ri rifles, you have so many standards that could apply. Uh, sur les questions de capacité. On the question of capability. Uh, mais elles sont liées à certains éléments que je viens d'évoquer. This is bound up with some of the points I've just mentioned. Uh, il faut commencer par bâtir des programmes communs. We have to start by putting together common programs. Nous le faisons sur les avions de transport de grande capacité. Enfin, we're doing this on, uh, uh, say, a, a large capacity transport aircraft. Uh, et il y a d'autres 
clairement d'autres domaines où nous devons mettre en poule nos programmes de recherche et nos programmes d'acquisition. And there are other areas in which we have to pool our research programs and our purchasing programs. Un point politique lié aux capacités est quand même celui de notre relation dans l'OTAN et avec l'OTAN. There's a political point that has to be brought up in connection uh, with capabilities uh, within NATO and uh, outside NATO. Uh, J'ai toujours été partisan, en ce qui me concerne, de, de préinspecter la ligne de, de la fameuse déclaration de Saint-Malo entre Français et Britanniques sur une défense européenne autonome et solidaire. Uh, I've always personally been in favor of respecting the line that was drawn in the Saint-Malo uh, declaration uh, on uh, the question of uh, uh, a, uh, an autonomous uh, European defense policy based on a solidarity. Uh, autonomous and solidarity. Yes, based on solidarity. Yeah, sure. Uh, dans, dans, dans le cadre de l'Alliance Atlantique. In the context of the Atlantic Alliance. Ce que je veux dire par rapport à la question des capacités, à la question des moyens qu'il faut coordonner ou qu'il faut augmenter, c'est qu'il faut que les citoyens de chacun de nos pays, les parlements nationaux, comprennent et soutiennent ce que nous faisons. Uh, what I mean to say on the question of uh, capabilities which have to be better coordinated or uh, improved is that the citizens and the parliaments of our countries need to understand the needs that we face. C'est pour ça uh, que, que le la question du concept stratégique, ce grand débat qui devrait s'ouvrir sur un nouveau concept euh, euh, beaucoup d'années après celui de 2003 euh, est absolument nécessaire. And this is why the strategic concept and the broad-ranging debate on a strategic concept many years now after uh, 2003 have to be opened up. Euh, nous avons besoin d'une appropriation par les peuples par les parlements nationaux qui les représentent de, de, de cet enjeu de sécurité et de, de défense commune. Uh, we have to uh, have uh, our peoples and our parliaments take ownership of this idea of a strategic concept. Uh, il faut commencer par là. And we have to start from there. Uh, moi, je suis convaincu que les citoyens européens peuvent comprendre et soutenir And I believe that European citizens can understand and support just such an ambition. On peut imaginer, puisque vous parliez de moyens, que s'agissant de l'investissement qu'il faut faire dans certains programmes, notamment de recherche, on pourrait imaginer que plusieurs pays européens, ou tous ensemble, nous développions ce que nous avons commencé à élaborer de manière un peu euh, comme laboratoire des project bonds, c'est-à-dire des emprunts communs pour faire. Euh, puisque vous, vous dites où se trouve l'argent, euh, des, des investissements communs, notamment dans le domaine de la recherche. Uh, we could imagine, since you mentioned resources and means, uh, several countries uh, getting together to make investments into programs uh, uh, using, say, uh, to develop research, uh, using, say, project bonds or common loans con, uh, in order to develop um, the resources that we need. Dans, dans mon petit livre, là, j'ai fait une autre proposition dans un domaine qui qui peut avoir à voir avec les, les moyens militaires, en tout cas en matière de transport ou, ou d'observation satellite, liés à la protection civile et à la lutte contre les grandes catastrophes naturelles ou industrielles. Uh, in my short book, I refer to what could be done in order to develop uh, satellite uh, um, monitoring uh, and uh, similar matters in order to, to develop our industrial capabilities. Non, pour, pour faire face aux catastrophes industrielles uh, to to naturelles. Industrial and natural disasters. Ce qui pourrait être une force européenne de protection civile. Uh, we could have a, a European civil protection force. Uh, moi, j'ai été ministre français des Affaires étrangères quand j'ai dû faire face aux conséquences du tsunami, par exemple. Uh, when I was French foreign minister, I had to face up to the consequences of the tsunami, for example. Uh, nous avons vu comment tous les pays européens sont allés immédiatement à Haïti pour faire face au tremblement de terre, mais chacun séparément, les uns des autres. Uh, we saw the European countries all going straight to Haiti after the earthquake, but each went separately. Et combien de temps ça va durer, ça How Alors, long on, is this going to go on, on, tout, on a tous des problèmes budgétaires. Euh, on devrait avoir la capacité de mutualiser, en cas d'urgence, euh, un certain nombre de 
d'unités spécialisées sur le, le traitement des catastrophes industrielles ou naturelles, hein, d'être de, de, plus efficace ensemble et de dépenser moins d'argent grâce à cette action commune. We all have budgetary fiscal problems, uh, all of our countries, but surely we should be able to pool our resources and face up to particular industrial and natural disasters in order to be more efficient, more effective. Uh, sur la question des Balkans, uh, c'est pour moi, j'ai toujours pensé que les, la question des Balkans était euh, un test de crédibilité pour, euh, pour l'Union européenne. Uh, on the Balkans, I've always thought that the case of the Balkans was a, uh, a credibility test for the European Union. Et euh, euh, nous avons déjà engagé ce processus de réunification ou d'intégration des Balkans dans le projet européen. We've already started this process of uh, uh, reunification and, uh, uh, and integration of the Balkans into the European project. Bulgarie, uh, Slovénie, uh, récemment Croatie sont dans l'Union européenne. Bulgaria, Slovenia, recently Croatia have all joined the European Et Union. La démarche logique, c'est que tous les pays des Balkans ont vocation à être le moment où ils seront prêts et où nous serons prêts à entrer dans l'Union européenne. Uh, the logical approach um, must be that the different Balkan countries, once they're ready, should be able to join the European Union. Et vous voyez bien que on a là une nouvelle preuve de, de la modernité et de la force du projet européen. You see, we have there renewed evidence of the uh, modernity and of the strength of the European venture, the European project. Ces peuples se sont confrontés pour des raisons ethnique, religieuse, nationale, depuis des, 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 des siècles et des siècles. Uh, these peoples have fought for centuries and centuries for various ethnic, uh, religious or national uh, motivations. Et, et uh, grâce à la perspective qui se trouve au-dessus maintenant de chacun d'entre eux d'être membre de l'Union européenne, de se tenir bien, uh, on, on voit que ces, 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 ces conflits se réduisent progressivement. Et là, par exemple, un des succès de de Catherine Ashton, c'est d'avoir rétabli le dialogue entre le Kosovo et, et, la, et la Serbie. Uh, thanks to this overriding prospect of being able to uh, be part of the European Union, uh, we see that uh, their uh, tensions have scaled down, that uh, they've uh, improved their behavior, and uh, recent evidence of this was the agreement that uh, was brokered by Cathy Ashton between Kosovo and Serbia. Well, thank you, uh, Commissioner Barnier. This was a terrific discussion. You started us out very provocatively with the subtitle of your book, uh, To Rest or To Remain and Be Free, and you wove that in through the, through the uh, entire conversation. And I th you have left us with a, a very ambitious and rich agenda, uh, so I don't see any resting on your part. I don't see any resting on the Commission's part. So uh, if, if, thank if you may, for joining us, please. Add something. We're getting a reading. I put this, at the end of this book, uh, this table published uh, two years ago by, yeah, give me please, because I perhaps oh, great. could be more clear. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll hand those out. Uh, sure. Thank you. I sure. can take this one. Uh, it was published by David Cameron two years ago when it decided to, to support what I did for the single market. And it published a little brochure, uh, and this, this table wa was in, the, in this brochure. It showed the 10 main countries and economic place e every 10 years uh, in the world. The ranking. The ranking. Today you have four European countries among the 10 first. And every 10 years, one of these four is it drops out. It drops out. And what happened in 2015, the day after tomorrow, uh, there is no longer one single European country, the G8. Mm. Wow. I, I don't want this, this table would be the, the, the reality. Huh? Uh, the, 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 the reason for which I am European, in plus d'être patriote, c'est ça? The reason why I'm a European, in addition to being a patriot, is exactly this. Pourquoi nous avons to, to, to become, to remain free and independent uh, in, in the framework of our alliance with the, the United States, we need to be together. 
We need a G8 with Europe in it. And Absolutely. I think you need, you need the Europeans to be together and to be, to be solid and to be robust and to be credible. Well, thank you. That's a very sure. powerful chart. Well, please join me in thanking uh, Commissioner Barnier for a very interesting conversation. Okay.